Good day, everyone, and I am back recording my lessons for the second semester. And this time, I am doing this for practical research one. And yes, today I'm going to discuss to you module two. So I have uh, entitled this as everything about qualitative research, since you will be learning today everything about it. Okay. So we have our agenda, of course, things to cover. So we have uh, characteristics, uses, strengths, and weaknesses, importance across uh, different fields of qualitative research. But the importance across different fields will be discussed to you during our synchronous time, all right? So watch the fourth, or I mean the fifth goal to be discussed on synchronous schedule. All right, so for today, you're going to learn these four. All right, of course, our reference book is Practical Research One by Milia Prietos et al. Next. So how do you define qualitative research? So what does it mean to do qualitative research? So these are the questions that we have to answer as we go through our discussion today. Okay, how do you define qualitative research and what does it mean to do qualitative research? So focusing on the four things that we have um, this, uh, presented earlier. Okay, so take note that qualitative research is 99%, okay, of your study will be composed of words. Okay, so qualitative research, 99% of your study will be composed of words because if you can remember last time we have discussed that when we say qualitative research, there is zero to minimal statistics involved. Okay, so there might be a little, little numbers involved on the methodology part, but minimal only. Okay. And let's now go forward with the, the definition of qualitative research. So getting at the bottom of human situations, social phenomena, or inquiries about human behavior in daily life. Okay, so when you get to the bottom, when you get to understand social phenomena okay, about human behavior. So these are the things that we have to consider in conducting qualitative research because it all revolves there. So the proponents who have defined qualitative research, we have three. So we have Creswell, that was in 1994, Locke, Sperduso, and Silverman, 1987, and then Frankel and Wallen, 1990. So these are the people who have defined qualitative research. And we will know on the next slide if how do they define qualitative research? So we have here on the next slide, okay, so we have Creswell. So here he is. I did not see actually pictures of Locke, Sperduso, and Silverman. So I just got their book. And their book was entitled Proposals That Work. I actually took a screenshot of this because I cannot save it. So we, you have their, their names. And then we have Brandon Colin Wallen, same thing. I cannot see their pictures, so I just took a screenshot of one of their books, and that is how to design and evaluate research in education. So let's now go with Creswell. So he defined, ooh, so he defined qualitative research as an inquiry process of understanding a social or human problem based on building a complex holistic picture formed with words, reporting detailed views of informants and conducted in a natural setting. So we have three things here to highlight in Creswell's definition. We have complex holistic picture formed with words. All right, so meaning we have to uh, describe what it's like, okay, based on your respondent's responses. Reporting detailed, inter, uh, detailed views of informants, yes, it is a must that we have to 
uh, report detailed views and it has to be conducted in a natural setting. Because in qualitative research, you have to go there. You have to experience what your respondents are experiencing in order to understand them. And by doing that, it has to be done in a natural setting. It can be a school, an, an institution, a place, okay, a home, right? Regarding of what your topic is all about. So that's for Creswell. And then for Lux, Perduso, and Silverman, they have defined qualitative research as the intent of qualitative research is to understand a particular social situation, event, role, group, or interaction. So we have to highlight the word here, understand. All right, so we do qualitative research to understand. Next, Fran and Tull and Wallen, okay, they have defined qualitative research, or they stress that researchers are interested in understanding how things occur. Because if you can remember, one of the things that we have to answer in qualitative research is the how and why. All right? So if we are to understand the how and why, we get to know how things occur. And it's very important. So their definitions make up what qualitative research is. Okay, and that is to form holistic picture with words done in natural setting, reporting detailed views of informants. We also have, it seeks to understand, okay, how things occur. All right, so we, with the three definitions from three proponents, as you can see, we have defined qualitative research. Okay, next kinds of qualitative research according to Marshall and Rossman 1995. So you will be learning on the following slides these things. We have participant observation, observation, in-depth interviewing, focus group interviewing. Then under, under this we have content analysis, narratology, films, videos, and photographs. So you will get to learn these kinds of qualitative research. So next, we now have the participant observation. This is the number one kind. So this demands immersion in the natural setting of the research participants. So you have to immerse yourself as the researcher or the researchers, you have to immerse yourselves with the respondents and natural setting. So if your respondents is in school, they're in school, for example, you have to go there, you have to conduct your study there, all right? Because you cannot know their behavior, the way they react to things, the way they respond to things if they're not in their comfortable place. So you have to go there, okay? So that's for participant observation, just take note of the natural setting. Second, we have observation, so this entails systematic noting or recording of events and artifacts, that is, of course, your objects, in the social setting chosen for study. So noting or recording of events. So you, of course, you have to take down notes, you have to record, okay? Either, either of these two, either you record or you simply note, okay, about uh, the objects in the social setting of your study. It's very important. So you just let, you just let your respondents do their thing, okay? You observe and do nothing and just take down notes or record what are they saying or what are they doing, okay? You're not doing anything here, just observing. Then we have the third one, and that is in-depth interviewing. Okay, so this resembles conversations, but with predetermined response categories, deg a degree of systematization and questioning may be necessary in a multi-site case or when many participants are interviewed. So we do in-depth interviewing if we have a lot of respondents, if we have a large respondents, okay? So you do in-depth interviewing, you question them, one by one, okay, so that you get to learn or you get to know what are the things that you have to learn depending on the topic that you have, okay? So that's in-depth interviewing. You just converse, 
okay, with every individual. Then we have the fourth one, okay. So this is focus group interviewing. So it involves seven to 10 at a time, six to eight people who are unfamiliar with one another and have been selected because they share certain characteristics that are relevant to the research inquiry or problem. So take note, focus group. So it's different from the in-depth interviewing because here you have only seven to 10 or six to eight respondents, okay? And they are always or mostly unfamiliar with each other just because they share certain characteristics, okay? So under here we have focus group interviewing can be classified as letter A, we have content analysis, narratology, and C, films, videos, and photographs. So content analysis, so this calls for systematic examination of forms of communication to document patterns objectively as shown in letters, emails, minutes of meeting, policy statements, and a lot more. So you have to analyze the content that you have, especially if you, um, if your secretary, for example, you were able to experience this wherein you have to summarize your minutes of meeting, okay? The letters, you have to analyze content. So that's content analysis. Then second, we have narratology can be applied to any spoken or written story. So narrative inquiry requires a great deal of sensitivity between participant and researcher. So actually, I have an example of narratology. It was given to us by our professor. Then she said that it was it was really tasking on the part of the researcher because you get to transcribe, okay? Because it was it was recorded actually. The questions and the answers are recorded. So you have to transcribe everything. And it's very lengthy because you have to narrate, okay? And after that, you have to make your interpretation based on the narrative that the respondents have given you, okay? So it can be applied to spoken or written story. Then lastly, we have here the films, videos, and photographs. So if you get to um, use the videos and photographs, films, okay, of course, very easy, that falls under this category. So these provide visual records of events or records of events, especially the films and videos which capture the perspective of the filmmaker or videographer. So that's it. If you do film, if you do filmmaking, of course you get to capture the perspective, okay. And then um, photographs, you get to know, okay, what are the faces, what are the things that you have to see in a photograph. So focus group again, interviewing can be classified into three, and that is content analysis, narratology, films, videos, and photographs. All right. Next, characteristics and uses of qualitative research. Actually, we have nine here. So what are the characteristics and uses? We have number one. Okay, the research takes place in a natural setting, of course. This has been um, given to us by Creswell. So a home, an office, an institution, or a community where human behavior events of course, so you have to go there, blend in, immerse yourself in a natural setting. Second, the focus of qualitative research. So I have abbreviated qualitative to quali. <laughs> okay, so quali, quali research is on a participant's per perceptions and experiences and the way they make sense of their lives. Okay, so that's the focus of quali research. So that's according to Fran Enkel and Wallen. 1988 and Cresswell 2013. Okay. So again, participants' perceptions and experiences. Okay, that's the focus of quali. Moving next, we have uh, the methods are interactive and humanistic. Yes, because you you have to make interview questions that your respondents would really open up to you. So it is very interactive. Okay, so calls for active participation of research participants 
and sensitivity to the needs of the participants. And also you have to remember that we have to observe ethics okay, in conducting qualitative research. Four, it uses various ways of collecting data. So example, we have observations, structured or semi-structured interviews, documents, emails, blogs, videos, stills, and a host of others. So these are the various ways of collecting data and more will be discussed during our chapter three discussion. Okay, that will be on fourth quarter already. Then we have number five. Okay, qualitative research results being emergent. New discoveries during the data gathering process can lead to a total revision of research questions, among others. That is why we have, or we have coined the term working research title. Why? Because during the data gathering process, as what's stated here in number five, it can lead to a total revision of research questions. You get to revise your research questions because there is something that emerged or yeah in your study that you have to revise. Okay, that's why it's a working research title. Number six, the theory of general pattern of understanding will emerge as it begins with initial codes, develops into broad themes and coalesces into a ground theory or broad interpretation, of course. So we have to uh, know our own personal bias before we could have our general pattern of understanding, okay? Then, number seven, it is fundamentally interpretative. Yes, it merely goes there okay on how you interpret it as the researcher so this includes a description of an individual or setting analyzing data for themes or categories and finally making an interpretation or drawing conclusions about its meaning so these are the things that you have to undergo first before you get to before you do the interpretation all right then number eight, the researcher may filter the data through a personal lens that is situated in specific social, political, and historical moments. So one cannot escape the personal interpretation brought to qualitative data analysis, and that is according to Creswell, 2013. Yes, because we have that own personal bias, and sometimes our interpretations will be based from our bias and according to Creswell, one cannot escape the personal interpretation. Yes, it's true, okay? Because you have the capacity as a researcher to filter the data on how you perceive it, okay? Then lastly, the researcher is the primary instrument in data collection, yes? Because through you as a researcher, you get to have your data. So he or she interviews social phenomena holistically. The more complex, interactive, and com encompassing the narrative, the better is the qualitative study. That's why most of qualitative researchers, they get to use recorders, and then they get to transcribe that later, okay? Because it's, uh, it's more complex if they do that, because it's very complete, okay? And take note that the qualitative research systematically reflects on who he or she is in the inquiry and is sensitive to his or her personal bias and how it shapes the study, okay? So if you define or if you have interpreted a phenomena, well, that reflects who you are as the researcher because again, qualitative research is, of course, it has its personal bias. So take note as well, that the persona self becomes inseparable from the researcher self. And that's a, according to Mertens, 2003, as cited in Creswell, 2013. Take note, the persona self becomes inseparable from the research self. So you have to really be able to distinguish the two because it's one of the weaknesses of qualitative research when you have your personal bias. But later we will discuss that. All right, so these are the characteristics and uses of qualitative research. Let's now go to the strengths and weaknesses of qualitative research. What are the things that you have to learn 
okay, in doing quality research. So let's now go with strengths. So one of the strengths, number one, it can offer the best light on or best answers to certain phenomena. It can be social, economic, political, or even psychological, yes, because you merely focus on the behaviors, okay? The way your respondents would see, would use his or her senses. So it's the best light because you get to understand humans, all right? Second, research results are exhaustive, even underlying meaning surface. Yes. It's exhaustive, of course, because there are discoveries that would emerge while you're doing your research. Okay. And number three, it offers several avenues to understand a phenomena, behavior, human conditions, and the like. So we have a lot of things that emerge, of course, if you do qualitative research. So one thing is the behavior, the human conditions, like how people or how the respondents would react, why are they reacting like that? So you get to understand humans. And I think it's one of the best things in qualitative research because you get to learn them, you get to know them deeper. And that's for the strengths. And we only have two to weaknesses for qualitative research. And take note that the so-called weaknesses of qualitative research will not affect the serious researcher who is willing to invest any amount of time or resources in this endeavor. So the weaknesses should not stop you in doing, of course, qualitative research. But for the information, of everyone, number one weakness is the total immersion in the natural setting of the research can be time consuming and tedious and resource draining as well. Yes, because you simply have to go there and then you have to be patient to get the data that you want. So it is time consuming and tedious, especially if you will do interview method, <laughs> okay? You have to be patient. And number two, subjectivity on the part of the researcher can happen because, again, we have our personal bias. So to prevent this, Locke et al. 1987, they stress that from the beginning of the study, the researcher must identify his or her personal values, assumptions, and biases. So you have to separate okay, your values, your assumptions, your biases to your study. Okay, so you always have to separate. You can, you can just like write your biases in a piece of paper and then remind yourself that, hey, I should not um, base my interpretation of the study on these things. Okay, so these are the weaknesses of qualitative research. Now we go here. So if you have questions, people, you have to write them down and ask them to me during our synchronous class. So as you can see, my discussion is very self-explanatory. But if you want to go deeper, you can write your or you can take down notes. Okay, you can write your questions down and ask them to me during our synchronous class. Okay. And before I leave the meeting or end this meeting and this call, I have something that I would like to thank you about. So here, you can only understand people if you feel them in yourself. And that's according to John Steinbeck. So you have to have empathy. Okay? Walk in your respondents' shoes and you will get to learn them. You get to know them. Okay? So it's one of the qualities that you have to have as a qualitative researcher all right so that ends actually my discussion today and i hope that you learned from it and i hope that you were able to take down notes while you were listening and see you on our synchronous schedule bye